super rich have never had it quite so good. The thousand wealthiest Britons in the latest annual Sunday Times rich list are now worth a total of almost 413 billion pounds, 53 billion more than last year. But the number of foreign-born billionaires, well, that's reached a new high. Indian steel tycoon Lakshmi Mittal, for instance, topping the list for the fourth year with just 27.7 billion. In second place, Chelsea's owner Roman Abramovich, who's seen his wealth rise to 11.7 billion. But it's many British billionaires who've fallen down the list, including Sir Philip Green, dropping from seventh to ninth at 4.3 billion. And the Virgin boss, Sir Richard Branson, who slumped nine places to number 20 with a mere 2.7 billion pounds. Well, joining us is Philip Beresford, who's compiled the rich list, and lifestyle analyst Harry Fox from Quintessentially, a luxury lifestyle company. And first to you, Philip, because it is 20 years since you've begun this list. Yes, it seems like a life sentence. Yeah, without but... time off for good behaviour. Exactly. Um, and what does it tell us? Uh, indeed, is it still relevant to us 20 years on? Well, when I first started, uh, it was regarded as a terribly vulgar exercise by the lords and dukes who were in it. The now toffs of Britain. The toffs mm. of Britain. Now it's filled with all the hedge fund managers, uh, entrepreneurs and the like. And they are the new Britain. They are creating the wealth that spreads and percolates down the economy. So in that sense, it's a good snapshot of Britain So are, are we a sort of nouveau riche country then, Britain now? Very much a nouveau riche country and very much aping America. Right. What does that mean for us uh, then, uh, Harry? Because, I mean, as your company proves, there is now a whole industry, it seems, for the rich in Britain. Well, indeed. I mean, quintessentially, we like to keep ourselves as universal. So, indeed, we're not segregated in class or whatever, that it's absolutely open to everyone. Who Just how much money you've got. Well, exactly, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> of course. And, uh, and so, I mean, with that, you know, we'll be able to give them the opportunity of investing into uh, some of our sort of sister brands like quintessentially wine and quintessentially art and uh, giving them the opportunity where perhaps they can spend their time uh, purposely with quality. And, and is this what people do? They actually do spend? They don't just sit on it and save? I'm, I'm thinking of, uh, for instance, you know, the, the super rich in America. Um, and, and, you know, they don't spend. They actually sort of keep their wealth hidden away. Well, that's true. I mean, uh, I think it's uh, certainly giving them the uh, opportunity of spending sophisticatedly in the way that we can... Um, give them sort of uh, certain things like you have a quintessentially escape which uh, really gives them uh, the opportunity of um, spending their time maybe only for a weekend but with a, a, a James Bond uh, experience going up to Monaco by private jet. Well, and crashing your car into a lake, yeah. <laughs> well, um, so. now, uh, how accurate is this, Philip? I have to ask because I mean, we have talked about Paul McCartney, for instance, of Paul McCartney yeah. being worth 850 million. Suddenly is the court case, and you know all the uh, the lawyers and, and the accountants say, well, actually, no, he's only worth 400 million. How do we know these figures are actually accurate? Paul McCartney, we were slightly over the top, but we think that the well, by double. We, we, yes, we think that the the court didn't take account of some some of his assets, such as uh, Linda's will of 100 odd million, and we also think that he was they were a little conservative on valuing. Sir Paul McCartney's um, uh, wonderful back catalogue of music. Which yeah. might come onto some sort of iTunes yeah. now and so yeah. on, yeah. yeah. But I mean, that, that is the other aspect, that you know, the super rich are actually very good at hiding their money. They don't like talking about it. So um, have you really got to sort of do some investigative journalism to find out where all the money's hidden? I have a very good spy network that rivals Ooh, the KGB. Tell us more. I have lots of people who tip me off. I look at all the accounts. I have a chap who covers the secret rich particularly and knows the bankers who deal with them. Um, I have people all over the place feeding in information. Right. So, Harry, how rich do I have to be to be rich in modern Britain? Well, um, it's, uh, to be honest, uh, I mean, certainly when it comes to quintessential, I mean, we have different levels of membership which will be able to suit different lifestyle needs. So, I mean, if you're travelling a huge amount, we can offer you uh, something which would organise you to have a, a global reach of different fixes. But um, I think, to be quite honest, uh, it's really about how you spend your money. But do you, do you need a million, for instance, to be actually rich in, in today's, today's world? You can have less than that, really. Really? Um, I, a lot of it's just uh, down to how you want to spend it and the time allowed yeah. you can to spend. And, and I mean, uh, this is a bit worrying about Britain's million and billionaires, of course, we should talk about, slipping right down the list. Um, does that mean that we really are feeling the, the credit crunch, uh, even at the top layers? Absolutely. I mean, this is the retail 
uh, problems emerging uh, that will hit people like Sir Philip Green, yeah. uh, Sir Richard Branson. He appeals to the mass market and the mass market is mm. belt tightening. Down to his last 2.7 billion. Times are hard. Philip and Harry, thank you very much indeed. Thanks for joining us here on uh, Sunrise.